Cannabis Investing Newsletter. Today we're looking at Bluma Wellness. Bluma, of course, is being acquired by Cresco Labs. I wanted to look at this stock to get a good idea as to what Cresco could be worth. And I've really broken down the future of this company, and it's interesting. I believe that BMWLF by itself could hit six to seven dollars. Right now, Cresco is trading at about twelve dollars, and lately the price has been moving lower and lower. So this would be significant. But the seven, six to seven dollars for Bluma, this is a twelve to twenty-four month outlook. So don't get too excited on that. Nonetheless, this is a big part of what the future of Cresco Labs could be. So let's take a look at this. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to look at what is going on with the particulars of this company. They've got eight dispensaries, 10 on the way over the next several months. They also have two grow facilities, and I'm going to break this down as to how this stock gets to $6. And then I'm going to show you how it's going to break down into what could happen with Cresco Labs. I'm looking only at the future projections of what Bluma could be doing based on their grow facilities and their dispensaries. I'm D.H. Taylor. I've been involved in markets on a professional level for some 30 plus years. Over the past four to five years, I've been looking only exclusively at cannabis stocks. I've got about 350 that I look at on a regular basis. And today, of course, it's Bluma. As with all cannabis stocks, there have been some selling lately. I do see continued selling. Bluma, of course, slid all the way down, closing about a buck for today. Um... I get a lot of questions being asked, where's the bottom? And, and a lot of people that I've been telling is on these better cannabis stocks, all this selling is a better buying opportunity. If you want to know what's going to happen with the cannabis sell-off that we're seeing where the bottom is, take a look at canopy growth. What I affectionately call canopy garbage. Way overvalued based on what its potential is. I would not be surprised if Canopy Growth declared bankruptcy one day. I've said that before. I've gotten some jeers out of that. I don't care. Here's the deal. They were given $4 billion. They got $1.3 billion left after two years and have gotten basically nowhere. These smaller companies are cooking uh, these bigger companies like Canopy Growth, of uh, Aurora Cannabis, all these other companies. So don't want to hear it. If you want to know what's going on with the selling, take a look at Canopy Growth. When it breaks down, I think I saw it about $32 today. When it gets down to about $20, maybe $18, that's probably where the selling is going to stop for all the cannabis stocks. And that's probably going to be a good time to get into some of your better picks that you've been looking at. Here's a look at Cresco Labs. Again, this one kind of uh, sold off as well. I could see $10 breaking within the next two months. That's sad because I believe Cresco is a solid company. If you're holding on to that, just fall asleep for a year. Truth is though, this company is going to be worth a lot. So Bluma being a big part of what's going to happen in the future is important to understand this. If you're looking to get in, when we break $10 on, to the downside on Cresco, you should be hitting the buy button all day. I don't think we're going to see the lows right around $6 that we saw not too long ago, back in what, the late fall, early fall. If we do, man, is that a bargain. All right, let's look at the essentials of Bluma Wellness. Florida, Florida medical only cannabis. Now, Florida itself have tried to pass adult use recreation. They just tried again, couldn't even get it on the ballot. They wouldn't get enough signatures to even make it onto the ballot. Now, here's my take on that. When the feds finally legalize cannabis, Florida then has a much better chance of becoming adult use. 
So the fact that it was so iffy and they didn't even make it on the ballot, you can just move forward from that and look for federal legalization. At that point, a lot of states, I think, are going to start falling like dominoes with their own programs. And it might even be that the people step up and say, this is what we want. In the meantime, there are... Uh, Florida is underserved. Um, there's still so much growth pro potential right in the state itself on the medical side. So the fact that Bloom Wellness has eight established dispensaries with another 10 on the way, this is big. This is going to be a, a really solid investment for Cresco. Bloom Wellness has two growth facilities. One of them just looks like they're just producing flour. The other one is processing in different ways as well as producing flour. Uh, they do have the eight dispensaries open with another 10 dispensaries opening, most of them opening up in the next couple of quarters. You're going to start seeing this hit into their revenue going forward. So it's going to be interesting. I'm probably not going to take a look at Bluma again after this video simply because they are being acquired. But this will give you a firm understanding of what the company can do. So we're looking at Ruskin, Florida, the grow facility there. 24,000 square feet. It's a basically a cultivation facility and all they're really doing is producing flour at this facility. 4,000 pounds cultivation capacity on a regular basis. The second facility, a little more sophisticated, Indian Town, Florida, They've got 54,000 square feet growth facility. They're doing a little different product mix there. They got some, they're curing, processing, and extracting. They have a different facility to do that at this facility. Um, but the real kind of focus should be the 13,457 cultivation capacity on an annual basis. I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to break down the operations of Bluma in two separate parts. I'm going to treat them, treat them exactly as if they are two separate companies, the grow facility and the dispensaries. I'm going to look at the grow facility and see how they can produce their, their product and sell it all on a wholesale basis to the dispensaries in order to build up a revenue picture, margins, costs, and things like that. So, the 17,000 capability they have for annual grow. Wholesale values are roughly about $1,500 for a pound of cannabis. Now they're selling or they're growing about 17 and a half thousand. This, that 1,500, I've seen highs as much as close to 2,000, 1,950. I've seen lows. A uh, couple, maybe about a year and a half ago in Colorado, where they're hitting about eight, nine hundred dollars, but the fifteen hundred seems to be about where an average is hitting right now. Those prices had bottomed; they're trending back upwards. It's possible that we could see higher prices, but I think the fifteen hundred is going to be a, a number we can stick with comfortably. All right, so their total growth cap capabilities within the two facilities, 17,500, call it 17,500. If they produce 95% of their total capacity cultivation and we take that, multiply it by 1,500 per pound, the grow facilities can generate 25 million in total revenue. All right, let's move forward. On that revenue, there are costs. From the 25 million, I'm looking at about a 60% margin that they're going to sell this to themselves. That means 40% in total cost. Something I want to kind of keep in mind, they're selling their products to other places, but for the purposes of this analysis, we're looking at total production being sold to themselves and then the dispensaries not selling any additional product. So, and I'll break that out, but it's very possible that I'm lowballing myself at six bucks, six to seven bucks. Nonetheless, cost of goods on that 25 million is 40%. So your total cost is going to be 10 million on the 17.5 pounds annually. This 
adds out to 15 million in gross profits with the, the, the 10 million in costs. Now let's take a look at the dispensaries with their revenues and costs. They're going to have the 15 million in total costs. This is the purchase price that they got from the wholesale. All right. They're then going to turn that 15 million into 71 million because mind you, 15 million becomes 35% of a bigger number. The 15 million is their total costs for the product. That 71 million should be their total revenue just for the dispensaries. Keep in mind, I'm only looking at Bluma selling their wholesale product to Bluma, the dispensaries, and the dispensaries only selling Bluma wholesale cannabis. The dispensaries are selling other products as well. Uh, there, Bluma is selling products throughout. So this uh, already, you know that I'm lowballing myself at six to seven dollars on this stock price. So this kind of solidifies it even more. All right, so they're going to have 71 million in total revenue, the 15 million in the costs. Cost of goods going to be at 25 million, with 46 million being gross profits on the products. Now, might get some question: How did we jump from 15 million to 25 million? There are other costs involved. Bluma Wellness, the uh, grow facility, is going to trim that flower. They're also going to process it. They're going to do multiple things to it. So the cost of goods runs up to $25 million for uh, packaging and things like that. Also, the dispensaries are going to have rent and other uh, costs involved in that. So there's, a, so there's some additional costs on top of the cost of goods. Now let's look at the dispensary's total revenues and costs. All right, they've got 25 million revenue from the grow with 15 million in gross profits. Then we're looking at the dispensary, 71 million revenue total for the dispensaries with 46 million in gross profits. This adds up to 96 million in total revenue, the 25 million in revenue from the grow facility and the 71 million in the revenue from the dispensaries. Gross profits from both of those operations are going to be 61 million dollars. Total operating costs. Now I only looked at cost of goods and gross profits and gross margins within the dispensary and the, uh, the grow facilities. Both of those operate under one umbrella company. So what we're doing now is we're looking at what is the total operating costs outside of producing product. This would be sales, general administratives, you know, the CEOs, um, other aspects of operating the business. You've got 96 million total revenue. That's the revenue from the growth facilities and the dispensaries. 61 million in gross profits. You're looking at 30% and that's about 30 to 35 percent is about right for operations like this. Uh, verse, uh, the 30 percent is 30 percent of the 96 million. This is a total operating cost of 28 million, leaving you operating profits of 33 million. Continuing operations costs involved in that taxation. Um, Costs for loans and things like this. This is where these kinds of things factor into. You have 26 million in operating costs, another 33 million in operating profits, and I looked at about 10% of the total revenue of the 91 million. I kicked it up to 10 million just to be conservative on that. That 10 million is the total operating cost. This is a projection. It's difficult to find this when you're, you're looking at some of the numbers throughout there, but this is fairly in line with the industry. This would leave 
23 million in net profits. Bottom line, for Bluma in 12, 15, 18, 24 months from now, after all these dispensaries open, they ramp up uh, their, their grow facility, start growing as much as they can, selling this on a wholesale basis to themselves, packaging the product and selling it at the dispensary. That would be 18 dispensaries. Let's look at the earnings per share. There's 168.5 million U.S. shares on the OTC, BMW LF. Then you've got another 159 million in Canadian shares, total 327.5 million shares outstanding. You take that, divide the total net profits by that 327, you're looking at six, call it seven cents earnings per share. I use 100 times future earnings per share. You're looking at a potential $6.90 for Bluma. Again, however, this is 12 to 24 months out. The base case scenario, if Bluma does achieve their baseline of 91 million, I think that's a high probability. The state of Florida is underserved when it comes to the number of dispensaries on a per capita basis and the consumption level for medical cannabis versus when you look at other states. So 91 million, I think we can easily get, you could see Bluma get up there real easy. If they achieve 60 to 65% gross margins and they maintain their cost basis down to 30%, you're looking at the 690 per share. Now I get a lot of questions about my future earnings per share multiple that I use. Let me break this down for you. The S&P 500 averages about 3.5% revenue growth every year. Bluma will be moving, their run rate right now is about 15 million. They're going to be running within the next 12 months up to about 60, 70, 80 million dollars, which blows out 3.5% revenue run rate. The S&P 500 is using a 35 times future earnings multiple. Mind you, I'm using 100 times. Cannabis is doubling on an annual basis with their uh, the revenues we're seeing being printed by government agencies who are you know showing the taxation, all the numbers that they're they're seeing. It, cannabis is doubling annually, so when you're looking at 35 times future earnings, that's just not within the wheelhouse of cannabis because the growth rate is so much extraordinarily higher. Uh, I've had debates where people say, I use 50 times. Okay, so that's 15, that's 50% of 35 times future earnings. Bluma could blow out 3.5% revenue in just one quarter. They just printed a 50% quarter over quarter run rate. So how can we justify 50? This is why I use 100 times future earnings multiple. I get a lot of people asking me about that one. I think this is reasonable right now. This is not something I'm going to be using consistently years from now. The run rate is going to decline as these companies become more and more uh, mature, if you will. So here's a final look at Bluma. I usually, when I look at these final charts, I'm trying to put together a picture of where to be buying into. The way they structured this sale, basically, Bluma is getting a dollar for dollar. It's something like 0 0.0895 shares per one share. Uh, Cresco is trading right around $12, so it's about 80% of that, which equals $1. Um, I do see the value of Bluma coming down along with Cresco. So this is going to have to, uh, you don't really factor it in when it comes to the, the shares per se, but you would factor this into when you're looking at valuations going forward. I think Cresco, they picked themselves up an excellent company for a song. The future potential of this is enormous, and they picked it up for a dollar a share, and they didn't even spend any cash. They just 
gave him extra shares. I don't think Bluma shareholders did poorly either. They still have to wait some two years until they get there. At the same time, Cresco is growing. So they're kind of getting the best of both worlds. The growth rate of all of Cresco plus what's there in Bluma. Then should Florida flip to adult use? Game over. Forget about it. If you like my content, please, by all means, subscribe. You can find me on YouTube, obviously. Uh, Twitter, StockTwix started finally using that account that I've had for years and years. I've got a free email newsletter. Uh, if you really like my content, I break down everything here in writing. It's on my website. A monthly subscription is all of five bucks. Please, by all means, you can get a look at my top picks. Mind you, I'm looking at 350 different cannabis companies. I have about 10 to 15 that I love. They're listed there for you. I've got buy levels in there. All of five bucks per month for a subscription. This is D.H. Taylor. I want to say thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.